So if someone said to me, <clears throat> what do you think about Brian and Anna Marie Clement um, and, and the information they present, I would say, I think it's fantastic. I think they're experts and they've have so much great information for people that are dealing with health issues and everything. And if someone said, do you think I should follow them? I'd say, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think you should follow Brenda Davis or Joel Furman. And the reason is because no matter how convincing it is to eat sprouts, green juice, and wheatgrass, it really seems like the first step for a person who's not sick is beans. And I don't know how to get anyone to switch from a regular diet to an all salad sprout juice diet, even though it might be logically better. I feel like if someone could sum up this whole conference, I would sum it up and eat beans. That's how it seems like you get off <laughs> animal products is with beans and maybe whole grains. So I don't want to lose all the people that are sitting at home, all motivated, all psyched up. They just heard Will talk about animals and they really care about this, but they're hungry. They're hungry at lunch. They're hungry at dinner. They eat a salad for three days and it's just not, they don't have it all together. So wouldn't the first step for most people who are not in a crisis situation to start switching to beans, isn't that the protein source that is the answer to get people satiated? Isn't two cans of chickpeas with whatever you have to put on it, the way to get calm and, and take the first step? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, again, we're realists. And so we didn't jump out of a plane without a parachute. So we ate cooked diets to begin with. And I was very uh, exploratory. So I was deeply involved with macrobiotics. I wrote one of Michio Kushi's books for him. I was a strict vegan, uh, very, very short time was a vegetarian. And uh, one summer in just naturally moved into eating all raw food. And the difference was I doubled my health in three months. And my consciousness rapidly and radically permanently shifted. And then I picked up the book that I was ready for at that moment that was written by Ann Wigmore, who healed herself of stage four cancer. Now. Let's differentiate. There's some people on this, watching this panel tonight that are facing major disease. You can't just eat beans and think you're gonna get perfectly healthy. The good news is you're giving up the animal-based foods and all of the physical, spiritual, psychological health disorders that they bring on. But maybe you need to do what I did, Anna Maria did, and probably Dr. Tuttle did. I'm speaking for it. You make a slow but sure move in the right direction. Just don't get stuck in the sand. And so do I think cooked beans have that much protein in it? Any of those authorities that tell you they do, they're not right. So if you sprout a bean and basically cook it, it's going to be much easier to digest. This is why... When you're telling the listening audience out there to eat beans, they immediately think of a three-letter word called gas. Because it's almost impossible to break those things down. When you germinate it, it makes it much easier, much, uh, much more appropriate for you to get the amino acids that are in there. But I'm totally in congruence with you on that one, Stephen. Okay. Uh, next question. You have mentioned that we should eat sprouts and we should have algae. When you say we should have sea vegetables, you're talking about, I guess, dulse, kombu, nori, ajiki, all the sea vegetables. Is this just a nice, fun thing to maybe throw in a salad now and then? Or is this like a hardcore thing that you're saying is critical that we include in our diet? And are you concerned that seaweed comes from oceans and Fukushima is dumping nuclear wastewater into the oceans? And we're concerned about getting that into our seaweed. So is sea vegetable something that everyone should be making sure is in every salad? Or does it have too much salt? Or does it have ocean contaminants? How does seaweed fit into our diets? I'll try to break it to several different comments. Number one, a lot of you were conned by not so well-educated doctors to take fish oil because of omega fatty acids the oleic acids, which are incredibly important for the brain and energy 
uh, in the physical body. But where the fish get that from are sea algae. So just like you don't get protein from meat, you get it from where the animal gets the protein, from the grasses, the greens, the fresh, fresh plants. The same thing with fish oil. When Anna Marie and I were invited to Russia after Chernobyl, and we were asked to speak to many of the victims of Chernobyl and work with them, we strongly advise these people to take sea algae. Sea algae, once again, is the second life form on the planet Earth. This is well before you showed up. And the reality is those sea algae are immune to the heavy metal poisons, including uranium, which is a heavy metal that's permeating most other plants. And it actually inversely takes radioactivity and other heavy metals out of the body. So we don't give people chelation therapy here to get rid of heavy metals. We stick them in infrared saunas and give them copious amounts of algae. So I'm not so worried about the contamination. Now, I wouldn't suggest or advise you go and collect algae off the coast where Fukushima is. But pretty much it's minimal what you find there and you'll have much more on land-based plants geographically. The last thing I'll say, yes, it would be a wise thing to take because as advanced thinkers in this field, uh, we don't know everything that's in the algae. It's a primal food. Think of it as the foundation in a 25 story building and your life is the 25 story building. And within those cells of those primal plants, not only are all the nutrients that we've so far discovered in the last 115 years of nutritional science, that's all it is. As a matter of fact, it didn't become a science until Cornell made it a science in 1928, but I'm gonna give it an extra few years because Dr. Fletcher was a man that discovered the first nutrient called B vitamin. And he helped to wipe out berry berry with that vitamin. And he found that in the nutritious part of brown rice. But what I will say to you, what we've learned so far is in all of those primal plants, plus a whole lot more we're yet to discover. Now, we don't all have to know everything we should know before we move forward. As long as you're on the right track, using your intuition, using the knowledge we have and the science that's available, you're going to make good choices. And the stress that's on our bodies now and uh, the lack of nutrition in the soil, iodine is a big deal. And so I, I definitely suggest kelp and dolls for men and women to make sure that we have enough iodine.